For 175 years, the name Borzig has been a byword for reliable, innovative engineering. Let's take a look back at the history of today's worldwide company, whose roots go back to the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution in Germany. In 1836, the then 32-year-old August Borzig took 8,000 Prussian thalers from his own savings and convinced financiers to help him build his own foundry and machine-building workshop. On the 22nd of July, 1837, the first iron was cast on the site. Since then, this date has been considered as the day that Borzig, today a worldwide company, was founded. In early 1840, Borzig had the chance to examine the blueprints for two locomotives built by the American Norris Company that were already in service in Prussia. The designs were good, but Borzig saw plenty of room for improvement and drew up his own version with a range of technical changes. By combining his own ideas with a tried and tested approach, Borzig scored a notable success. In 1841, his first locomotive left the factory, named simply Borzig I. In 1842, Borzig built a pump station for a fountain in the grounds of the Prussian royal palace at Sanssouci. This commission from King Frederick William IV brought Borzik renown in Berlin and beyond, demonstrating his ability to handle prestigious projects. At his death in 1854, Borzik left his only son Albert, pictured here, a veritable locomotive empire, composed of 500 engines running on the rails, two further workshops in Berlin's Moabit area with an impressive mansion, and land with mining concessions in Upper Silesia. Albert had big boots to fill, and filled them amply, taking his father's locomotive workshops and turning them into a worldwide business. As early as 1869, Borzig was exporting 58% of its products abroad, and Albert's step onto the global markets had been a resounding success. In 1858, Borzig celebrated its thousandth steam locomotive and was celebrated accordingly in the press. In view of the high degree of manual labour required for each model, this was an impressive figure. After Albert Borzig's death, a consortium of representatives was set up to run the company until his three sons, Arnold, Ernst and Conrad, were of legal majority. By the time the sons could take over the company in 1894, it had fallen on hard times. Ernst purchased a new site in Tegel to bring together on one site all of the production steps, still spread across Berlin at that time. As business picked up at the beginning of the 1920s, Borzig's offices were full to bursting. In view of the space limitations at its site, the company decided to innovate. It built the Borzig Tower, Berlin's first high-rise office building. In the 1920s and 30s, Borzig moved into producing small-scale appliances, such as this pressure washer, which could be used to wash cars. Refrigerators, as big as wardrobes back then, and vacuum cleaners were both part of the Borzig product range, and the company's order books were full. But the good times couldn't last forever. Inflation, strong competition, and a complete freeze on orders by the German state railways meant that, in 1929, the company was forced to sell the entire locomotive production arm to AEG. In December 1931, Borzig declared insolvency and was sold to the state-owned Rheinmetall AG in March 1933. The Borzig family members left the company. In 1935, Borzig became part of Rheinmetall Borzig AG, and this new company was then acquired by the state-run Reichswerke Hermann Göring in 1938. The Borzig production sites in Berlin and Upper Silesia profited from military orders as Hitler's regime rearmed Germany. One person who was particularly critical of the fact that this formerly family-run company had become part of the National Socialist system was Ernst von Borzig Jr., shown on the right in this picture, who was a member of the anti-fascist Kreisauer Kreis group. As the Second World War progressed, Borzig sites made widespread use of forced labour. The workers were often housed in appalling conditions at barracks and camps. In early 1945, the majority of the Borzig-Tegel site was destroyed. 
After several rounds of dismantling, in 1950, the reconstruction began with 700 Borzik workers on the old Tegel site. Soon after restarting production, Borzik began to build ship engines. The company also produced the boilers needed to rebuild many of Berlin's power stations. As of 1960, Borzig also began producing turbo compressors. Demand for these machines was booming and Borzig became part of the post-war economic miracle, the Wirtschaftswunder. In the 1960s, Borzig was still a synonym for German engineering and yet the company could simply not get out of the red. It wasn't until the company was sold to Deutsche Babcock AG in 1970 that it was able to more than double its turnover. No small part of this growth came from building ball valves for pipelines. Borzig managed to sell 25,000 of them in just 20 years. After German reunification, Borzig came under pressure to rationalise its business as subsidies to Berlin companies were discontinued and worldwide competition became more intense. There were hundreds of redundancies, and each area of the business was turned into an individual profit centre. Much of the old Borzig site was sold off. While Borzig returned to profitability, the company's owners, Babcock, fell apart in 2002 in one of the largest corporate insolvencies of German post-war history. But Konrad Nassauer, then director of the pressure vessel and heat exchanger division, had already hatched a rescue plan. The central idea was to move the business into a new private company, Borzig GmbH. In 2003, Borzig was sold to the Berlin financial investor Capiton AG in conjunction with a management buyout. 2006 saw a new company structure which also includes Borzig ZM Compression GmbH, a compressor manufacturer. One year later, the old Borzig harbour in Reinickendorf was reopened, just as it did in 1900. This harbour allows Borzig to ship heavy pressure vessels and heat exchangers across the world. In this picture, you can see a waste heat recovery boiler being loaded. It will be used to cool gases in the chemicals and petrochemicals industries. Borzig also produces transfer line exchangers for cooling ethylene, a sector in which it is the global market leader. Borzig vapour recovery systems make use of the most modern membrane technologies to keep the air clean and to keep raw materials wastage to a minimum. Another part of the product portfolio is piston and turbo compressors to pressurise gases, as well as industrial boiler construction and engineering in the power generation sector. In addition to this, Borzig offers a comprehensive repairs and assembly service, helping large-scale industrial sites such as power stations and chemical plants to keep running smoothly. Since 2008, Borzig has been part of the KNM Group Behad of Malaysia. As a company with a strong growth record, KNM is above all a supplier for refineries and power stations. This partnership allows Borzig to increase its presence in Asia. A striking example of this Asian expansion is the petrochemicals site at Guangzhou in the Chinese province of Fujian. Borzig delivered crucial components to this project that show the level of trust that Borzig's customers still place in the company today in its jubilee year 2012.